In this video, we're going to look at solving a given formula for a particular variable. The problem says the equation n equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of a over r is used to find the rotational rate n of a space station where a is the acceleration and r represents the radius of the space station in meters. This A right here is a little confusing. It's representing, uh, talking about what the A in the um, formula stands for. Now, all of this extra information is kind of just telling us that this is a legitimate formula that's used for a particular application. What we're, what we're going to want to do is solve it for a particular variable. So let's go ahead and solve this for R. So we're going to solve for R. Solve for R. Right now it's solved for n. n is by itself, n equals. So what we want to do is make it say r equals. And the way to do this is just by using the same techniques that you know to solve equations. In other words, to, if you're looking at an equation and you're trying to get x by itself, and, and usually there's no other variables in there besides x, especially when you just get started, and you can come up with an answer like x equals 10 or something like that. Um, it's the same idea here. All we want to do is we want to get r by itself. But we're going to have all these other uh, numbers. Um, the 2 is probably going to hang around. The pi is probably going to hang around. And you don't even really have to know what pi means in order to do this. You just have to think of pi as some value, and this being 2 times pi, and also a as some other value. So just to highlight the fact we're getting r by itself, let's go ahead and make this r red. So we want to get that r by itself. We look on the side of the equal sign where the r is, which is on the right-hand side, and we got all this stuff over here. So we just need to start clearing some stuff out. What can we get rid of? Well, the first thing I would get rid of is the 1 over 2 pi and try to get rid of that. So it's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of a over r. So what we need to do to get rid of the 1 over 2 pi is multiply both sides. So what could we multiply by that would get rid of this 2 pi? Well, since the 2 pi is in the denominator, we're going to multiply by 2 pi, which will cancel this 2 pi. You could also think of this fraction 1 over 2 pi and, and do the reciprocal, 2 pi over 1, um, which will cancel out this fraction as well, whatever, whatever you like. So I'll go ahead and write times 2 pi over here, and then I'm going to multiply by 2 pi over here. Big key, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other, just like any other equation that you, ha that you solve. Okay, so let's see what I have now. I have 2 pi n on the left-hand side equals, now on the right-hand side, since this is all multiplication here, I can cancel the t these 2 pi's. It doesn't really matter where I wrote it. I could have uh, wrote it on the left-hand side over here, but I wrote it on the right because I had more room. So these 2 pi's cancel. And now I just have 1 times the square root of a over r, which is just the square root of a over r. Okay, so we're getting closer to getting r by itself, which is the key. On the right-hand side, we want r by itself. It's better. There's less stuff over there. What do we need to get rid of next? We've got the square root and we've got the a. Well, you're kind of working from the outside in here, so the next thing you want to get rid of is the square root. So you ask yourself, what do I have to do to get rid of a square root? What's the opposite of taking the square root? And that would be squaring. So in order to sort of cancel out, I don't want to use that term too loosely, but in order to get rid of this square root, we're going to square this side, which this square root and this squared, they do undo each other and sort of... Um, cancel each other out. Well, I'll just go ahead and say cancel each other out. Now if I have to square the right hand side in order to accomplish getting rid of the square root, I also need to square, the, I'm sorry, yeah, then I also need to square the left hand side. What I do to one side I have to do to the other. I thought I had my right and my left mixed up there for a second, but we're all good. Okay, so to square the left hand side, I have 2 times pi times n and I need to square everything in, in those parentheses there. So basically I'm doing 2 times pi times n times 2 times pi times n. It's just a whole bunch of multiplication. So 2 times 2 is 4. Pi squared is just pi squared. And there's no reason to get the decimal and write this out as a decimal or anything. Just leave it as pi. And then n squared is just simply n squared. So I just squared everything on the left hand side. 
Now on the right hand side the square root and the square undo each other and get rid of each other so what we have left on the right hand side is a over r. All right, well, one thing you may have noticed here is that my r is in my denominator. We're closer to getting r by itself. All we really have is this a, but the r is in the denominator, and I don't really want that. I want it to say r equals. And there's a couple different options here for getting r by itself. So at this point, let me just put a star by this equation here, and we may show this a couple different ways from this point forward. So one way is to actually multiply both sides by r to get that r out of the denominator. So we can have it say r equals. So if I do this, on the left-hand side, I'll keep the, the r I want in red. I'll have r times 4 pi squared cap n squared equals. And then on the right-hand side, um, these R's are going to cancel out and I'm just left with an A. Now if we were trying to solve for A, we'd be done because we have A by itself on one side, but we're trying to solve for R, so we need to get rid of all this 4 pi squared n squared. So in order to do that, since it's multiplied by the R, I'm going to divide both sides by 4 pi squared n squared and divide this side by 4 pi squared n squared. So on the left hand side the 4 pi squared n squareds cancel out and I'm left with r equals a over 4 pi squared n squared and that would be my answer because I have r by itself. Okay let's go back to um, this equation that I put the star by and look at another way to solve it. Maybe you like this better. Either way will work where we had 4 pi n squared equals a over r. Um, if you think of this as a proportion, and I put this left-hand side over 1, one property of proportions, if you have a fraction equals a fraction, you can flip both sides. So let me write that property out. If you know, say, that uh, x over y equals s over t. If you know that's true, then it's also going to be true that y over x equals t over s. As long as you flip both sides, it's kind of like you're doing the same thing to both sides. Now why I would want to use that in this case is because my r is in the denominator and I don't really want it in the denominator. I want it up in the numerator so I can solve for r. So I could just flip both sides. Now if I flip the left hand side, I get 1 over 4 pi squared n squared equals r over a. And then to get r by itself, let me put this r in red like I had it before. Then to get this r by itself, I need to get rid of a. So to get rid of a, I'm going to multiply both sides by a because it's being divided by a. Now on the right hand side, my a's are going to cancel, which is good. That's what I wanted. On the left hand side, I have a on the top, a times 1 is just a, and on the bottom I have 4 pi squared n squared equals, and on the right hand side I have r. So see, I get the same thing as I did when I did it the other way. It's just that the r is on the um, right hand side as opposed to the left hand side, but it really doesn't matter as long as your r is by itself. So this original formula up here, n equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of a over r is the same exact formula as what we have here, these two things. Same exact formula, it's just a different form of that formula. And they don't look a lot alike, but they are the same formula. Um, an easier example, let's like if you thought of a really easy equation like distance equals rate times time. Well, if I divide both sides by r, and solve for t, I get d over r equals t. Is this a new formula? Not really. This formula, distance divided by rate equals time, is just another form of the formula distance equals rate times time. And I could solve it for r and get a slightly different form of that same exact formula. And that's what we did over here. We just created a different form of, of the original formula that was solved for n.